How are you guys doing? Today is Monday, October 4th, 2021. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, now that the 2021 MLB season is over, I'm going to use this episode to bring light to the players that were able to score 100 runs in this full MLB season, and additionally, the players that were able to bring 100 runs home with 100 RBIs. Um, I wasn't able to do this with the last season because the last season was shortened, and I do want to take the time to do this, especially at the end of the season, because in the MLB, the stats are really all aggregated at the end. So these are gonna, I'm going to do all my bits for the MLB season at the end, and I've already, do, I've already done an episode for all the pitchers that, would, that hit their elite numbers. I did every player that had at least 162 hits, every player that had at least 30 home runs. And now this is going to be the runs episode. Taking a look at all the players that would finish with 100 runs scored in the MLB. There are 16 players in the MLB that have scored 100 runs. There are exactly 20 players in the MLB that have driven 100 runs home. There are nine players in between that have been able to drive 100 runs and score 100 RBIs. And of course, a tip of the hat to them for what they've been able to do. And and because it is a very tough job to, of course, make it all the way around the bases and, of course, bring a lot of people all the way home. So that is why I think it's worth recognizing these players that put in all the work in the season during the offseason to put together what what is virtually an, an amazing season. Starting with the runs scored. Uh, Looking at the honorable mention, there were 23 players in the MLB that finished with at least 95 runs. Uh, Looking at the honorable mentions, there were two players that tied for 22nd in the league for 95. They were Nick Castellanos, the right fielder of the Cincinnati Reds, and Max Muncy, the all-star first baseman for the defending World Series champs, LA Dodgers. There was a three-way tie in the MLB for 19th in the league as Brandon Lau, the second baseman for the Tampa Bay Rays, Jorge Polanco, the second baseman for the Minnesota Twins, and Whit Merrifield, the elite second baseman for the Kansas City Royals, each finished with 97 runs on the season. Sitting ahead of them in 18th was Jonathan India for the Cincinnati Reds, as he has nine, he had 98 in 150 game, 50 games this season. And sitting ahead of them in 17th place with 130 games played, which is the least amount of games played out of anybody that I'll mention in this episode, uh, he would finish with 99 runs. He's, he would finish. He finished 17th in the MLB uh, as he did so for the Padres. Sitting right ahead of him was a three-way tie for 14th in the MLB with 100 runs this season. Uh, the most games there was a two-way tie actually. Matt Olson, the first baseman for the Oakland A's, would finish with 100 runs in 156 games played. Uh, not to mention that he would also go on to drive home 111 runs. He was one of the nine players that would drive that would finish with 100 runs and also drive in uh, 100 runs as well. Well, he would do so for the Oakland A's, the, well, one of the teams that failed to qualify for the American League playoff picture this year. Also, who play, uh, another player that, that, was able to drive in, that was able to score 101 times in 156 games was Rafael Devers, the all-star third baseman for the Boston Red Sox. Um, The Red Sox are still active right now as their next game is going to be against the New York Yankees. Additionally, Rafael Devers would bring in 113 runs. He was another one of the nine players that was able to finish with 100 RBIs this season. And a player that was able to score 101 times in 15 less games was Bryce Harper. The elite right fielder for the Philadelphia Phillies would finish. He would also finish with bringing 84 runs home as he had 35 home runs on the year. For a Phillies team that would fail to make the playoffs, but Bryce Harper would be one. Would be one of two players to finish with an OPS over one, so he would have a very good metrics season for himself. Sitting above this three-way tie for 14th place was Paul Goldschmidt, who finished 13th in the league in runs. He finished with 102 runs and 150. 
eight games. Additionally, he would finish with 31 home runs and 98-9 RBIs as he would help St. Louis finish with the second wild card spot. The St. Louis Cardinals are so active as they're going to play their next game against the LA Dodgers to compete for their playoff lives. Sitting ahead of Paul Goldschmidt is a two-way tie for 11th in the league in runs scored. Ozzy Albies, the elite second baseman for the Atlanta Braves, finished the season with 103 runs and 156 in 156 games did so while playing for the Atlanta Braves, the National League East champs. He would bring home 106 runs as he would be one of the nine players that finished with 100 runs and 100 RBIs. Sitting alongside him is another player that had 100 runs and 100 RBIs, the all-star designated hitter for the Los Angeles Angels, Shohei Otani. He brought he would finish with 103 runs and 156 games played for an LA Angels team that would fail to make the playoffs. Shohei would finish third in the MLB in home runs as he finished with 46 and he also had a like I said he had 100 runs or 100 RBIs. Sitting ahead of this two-run tie was Carlos Correa, the shortstop for the Houston Astros, as he had he finished 10th in the league in runs scored. He had 104 runs scored in 148 games for the AL West champs Houston Astros. He finished with 26 home runs and 92 RBIs as well on the season. Sitting ahead of Carlos Correa is Trey Turner, the all-star second baseman for the LA Dodgers, who would finish with the most hits and the highest batting average in the MLB this season. He would go on to finish with 107 runs and 148 games played. He also finished with 40 stolen bases this season, or he finished with 32 stolen bases this season, one of the few players with at least 30 this year. As right now, he is going to face off against the St. Louis Cardinals in a single game elimination that could see the Dodgers get knocked out as the defending champs. Sitting ahead of Trey Turner in eighth place is Mitch Hanniger, the right fielder for the Seattle Mariners. He finished with 110 runs and 157 innings. He finished with 39 home runs and 100 RBIs on the season. Um, sitting along, or sitting ahead of, or I guess before I get to that, Mitch Hanniger would finish with 110 runs. For a Seattle Mariners team, that was just one win away from clinching the playoffs. Sitting ahead of Mitch Hanniger, it was a two-way tie for the six most runs in the MLB. Uh, Jose Ramirez, the elite third baseman for the Cleveland Indians, scored 111 runs in 152 games played. He also would finish with 36 home runs and bring 103 runs home. With his 103 RBIs, he'd be one of nine players in the MLB with 100 and 100. And alongside him was Juan Soto, the elite right fielder for the Washington Nationals. He scored 111 runs and 151 games played. He would finish with 29 home runs as he brought 95 runs home in, in terms of RBIs. Fifth in the MLB in scoring was Marcus Simeon, the all-star second baseman for the Toronto Blue Jays. In addition to finishing with the most home runs that an American League second baseman has ever hit, with 45, he would finish with 115 runs as he played all 162 games. He and Whit Merrifield were the only two players to do that. He would, or like I said, he would do so for a Toronto Blue Jays team that would fail to make the playoffs just by a game. Sitting right ahead of Marcus Simeon and leading all second baseman was Jose Altuve, the elite second baseman for the Houston Astros. He would finish with 117 runs and 146 games for a Houston Astros squad that won the American League West. He would also finish with 31 home runs and 83 RBIs. Sitting ahead of Jose Altuve and one of only three players in the MLB with 120 plus runs this season, it was Freddie Freeman. The elite first baseman for the Atlanta Braves was the reigning American League MVP. He finished with 120 runs and 159 games played uh, for an Atlanta Braves team that won the National League East. He would additionally go on to finish with, he would be one of five players with 180 hits. He would also finish with 31 home runs and 83 home runs on the season. Sitting ahead of Freeman, the MLB runs crown runner-up would go to Bo Bichette. He would finish with 121 runs and 159 games played for a Toronto Blue Jays team that just missed the playoffs. He would finish with 29 home runs and 102, 102 RBIs. This is 191 hits were the most in the American League. He was second in all of the majors to Trey Turner, but he still fin and he would finish second in all of runs total as Bo Bichette would go on to put his name on the map.
And sitting ahead of Bo Bichette for the most runs in the MLB is Vladimir Guerrero Jr., the young elite first baseman for the Toronto Blue Jays. He would finish with 123 runs in 161 games for a Blue Jays team that just missed the playoffs. He would finish with 188 hits, which is one of the most one of the five most hits in baseball. He would finish with 48 home runs on the season, splitting the home run crown with Salvador Perez of the Kansas City Royals and he finished with 111 RBIs, the second most RBIs, and he was also he and Bo Bichette as teammates were also two of the nine players that would finish with 100 plus RBIs and 100 plus runs. Now taking a look at all the players in the MLB that would finish with at least 100 RBIs, there were 20 players in the MLB that were able to do so. But before I get into it, looking at the players that qualified for the honorable mentions, there were 31 players in the MLB that had at least 95 RBIs this season. 31st in the MLB was Juan Soto, the elite right fielder for the Washington Nationals. He had 30 or he had 95 RBIs alongside his 20 29 home runs as he was one of the 16 players that would finish with 100 runs on the season uh, and he would do so in 151 games for the Nats sitting ahead of him was Hunter Renfro the right fielder for the Boston Red Sox would finish with 96 runs uh, sitting ahead of Hunter Renfro it was a two-way tie for 100 and or for, I'm sorry, no, for 97 RBIs on the season as John Carlos San, who had 35 home runs, would do it in 139 games. And Fernando Tatis, the elite shortstop for the San Diego Padres, would finish with 97 RBIs alongside 42 home runs in 130 games. Sitting ahead of them, it is a three-way tie for 25th place as Jared Walsh of the LA Angels, Jorge Polanco, the second baseman for the Minnesota Twins, and of course, Aaron Judge, the elite right fielder for the New York Yankees, would finish with 98 home RBIs. Sitting ahead of them, it'll be a four-way tie for 21st in the league with 99 RBIs, as that tie would consist of Paul Goldschmidt, the elite first baseman for the San Diego Padres, who would have 31 home runs alongside his 99. Brandon Lau of the Tampa Bay Rays would finish with 39 home runs alongside his 99 as well. J.D. Martinez, the elite designated hitter for the Boston Red Sox, had 99, uh, 28 home runs alongside his 99 RBIs. And Joey Votto, the first baseman for the Cincinnati Reds, would finish with 36 home runs alongside his 99. Now, looking past that, there are three players in the MLB that are tied for 18th in the MLB in RBIs this season. The player that had the most of the that played the most games out of this bunch was Mitch Hanniger, the right fielder for the Seattle Mariners, who finished with 100 RBIs alongside his 39 home runs and 157 games played for a Seattle Mariners team that just missed the playoffs by one game. Also in this bunch, Shohei Otani, the all-star designated hitter for the Los Angeles. Angeles Angels would finish with 100 RBIs alongside 46 home runs, which would be the third most home runs in the MLB. He did all this in 155 games for, for a Los Angeles Angels team that failed to make the playoffs, hence his home run to RBI ratio. And also tied with them was Nick Castellanos, the right fielder for the Cincinnati Reds. Nick Castellanos finished with 100 RBIs alongside 34 home runs in 138 matchups for a Cincinnati Reds team that was the best team in the that had the best record in the National League for a team that didn't make the playoffs. Sitting ahead of Nick Castellanos in 17th place in the MLB for RBIs was Kyle Seeger, the third baseman for the Seattle Mariners. He finished with 101 RBIs alongside 35 home runs and 159 games played for a Seattle Mariners team that had just missed the playoffs by a game. Sitting ahead of Kyle Seeger is a two-way tie for the 15th most RBIs in baseball as Bo Bichette and Marcus Simeon, the second baseman shortstop comp, the double play combo for the Toronto Blue Jays would each tie with 102 RBIs. Marcus Simeon would finish with 45 home runs alongside his 102 RBIs and 162 games played. And then Bo Bichette would have 29 home runs alongside his 102 RBIs as he would go on to play 159 games for a Blue Jays team that just missed the playoffs alongside Marcus Simeon. 
Sitting ahead of this two-way tie is Jose Ramirez, the elite third baseman for the Cleveland Indians. He would, if he would finish 14th in the MLB in RBIs, he would finish with 103 RBIs alongside 36 home runs in 152 games for a Cleveland Indians team that failed to make the playoffs. Sitting ahead of Jose Ramirez in 13th place is Jordan Alvarez, the designated hitter for the Houston Astros. He would finish the season with 104 RBIs alongside 33 home runs, playing 144 games in a season where the Astros finished by winning the American League West. Sitting ahead of Jordan Alvarez in 12th place is Nolan Arenado, the elite third baseman for the St. Louis Cardinals. He would finish with 105 RBIs alongside 34 home runs in, 30, uh, in 157 games played. For a St. Louis Cardinals side that will be competing in Dodger Stadium for their playoff lives, sitting ahead of Nolan Arenado is a three-way tie for the ninth most RBIs in baseball. Ozzy Albies, the elite second baseman for the Atlanta Braves, would finish with 106 RBIs alongside 30 home runs in 156 games for an Atlanta Braves team that just finished off by winning the National League East. Uh, they elite third baseman for the San Diego Padres, Manny Machado, would finish with 106 RBIs alongside 28 home runs in 153 games played. Um, and uh, additionally, uh, in that tie, Austin Meadows would finish with 106 RBIs alongside 27 home runs in 142 games for a Tampa Bay Rays side that would finish as the only team in the American League with 100 wins. Sitting ahead of this three-way tie in eighth place is Austin Riley, the third baseman for the Atlanta Braves. He finished the season with 107 RBIs alongside 38 or 33 home runs in 160 games for an Atlanta Braves side that won the National League East. Sitting ahead of him, it was a two-way tie for 111 R RBIs in the season as Vladimir Guerrero Jr., the elite first baseman for the Toronto Blue Jays, had 111 RBIs alongside 48 home runs and 161 games played. Alongside him, Matt Olson would finish with 111 RBIs and 39 home runs and 156 games played. For an Oakland Athletics team, that would be outside of the playoff picture. Sitting ahead of them, there was a two-way tie for the fourth most RBIs in the Nash or in, in the major leagues. Um, as Raphael Devers, the all-star third baseman for the Boston Red Sox, would finish with 113 RBIs alongside 38 home runs in 156 games played, as he would do so for a Boston Red Sox team that is still alive and fighting in the American League wildcard game. Sitting alongside him is Adam Duvall, the left fielder from the Atlanta. Atlanta Braves. He would go on to finish with the most RBIs in the National League. He had 113 RBIs alongside 38 RBIs and 146 games played for an Atlanta Braves team that won the National League East. Sitting ahead of this two-way tie is Teoscar Hernandez, the right fielder for the Toronto Blue Jays. He finished with 116 RBIs alongside 32 home runs in 143 games for a Toronto Blue Jays team that just missed the playoffs. Sitting ahead of him with the RBI's crown runner-up for the season is Jose Abreu, the elite first baseman in the reigning American League MVP for the Chicago White Sox. He finished with 117 RBIs alongside 30 home runs in 152 games played for a Chicago White Sox side that had won the American League Central. And then sitting at the very top with the most RBIs in baseball, along with sitting with the most home runs in baseball, is Salvador Perez. The elite catcher for the Kansas City Royals would finish with 121 RBIs alongside 48 home runs in 161 games for a Kansas City Royals team that failed to make the playoffs. And with that said, those are all of the players that would go on to finish with 100 runs and 100 RBIs. And considering baseball is a game that's measured in runs, I totally think that the players that are bringing the runs home should be worthy of recognition for what they've been able to do this season. I want to thank the MLB Stats website for giving me what I needed, and I hope all is well. And last but not least, I will follow this up with the players that are, sit that are sitting really well, that are sitting in a league company as it comes to their averages while batting in the plate. With that said, I want to thank everyone once again. I hope all is well, and I'll catch you all with another episode immediately after this. 
once again. Today is Monday, October 4th, 2021. There's a lot of end season stuff for the MLB. But at the end of the day, I want this reel to really pop. I want it to really shine. And I want to show, I want to give a really full and thorough look through of the 2021 MLB season. With that said, I hope all is well. And I'll catch you more with another episode following this one. Peace out.